by a bit. Hi, how are you guys? I jumped the gun a little bit before um, I have my special guest here, Lenny Pearl. I just love Lenny. I met him in my Facebook group and he is a multi-talented guy. He knits and he does a bunch of other stuff too and I really enjoy the way his brain works. You know, do you ever find that you like people because of how they think and how they how they process things? So that's how that's my connection with Lenny. So welcome Lenny, but let me inter welcome everybody else first too. So we have Rona Shane from Southern California, Susan Day from Newcastle, Washington, Mary Inman from Atlanta, Georgia, Margaret from Chile, Central, she says sunny Central Chile, Jackie Rickles from Bakersfield, Elizabeth Nielsen from Sweden, Mary Tobita from New York, Sylvia Earle from Cameron Park, California, Tyla Hinton from Tennessee, Joy Green from Norfolk in the UK, Trevster, Trevor from Spain, hello, someday I want to meet you, Carolyn Finnerman from rainy central Oregon. Oh, you're getting some rain. Send some of that down here. We need it badly. Belinda Drabble from England. She's from the smallest county in England, Rutland. Sue Mills from New Zealand. Karen Tierney from Ashland, Oregon. Judy Snyder from Bakersfield. Fiber Chats, hello. And Maria Cardell. I want to tell you a little bit something about uh, Fiber Chats is that um, next week she's going to be my guest. Yay! So tune back in next week. So Lenny. Hello. <laughs> I love that your last name is Pearl. Does, any, does anybody say anything about that to you that you knit and your last name is Pearl? Uh, just me. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and it sounds like a stage and my first my, my my, you know, my regular name is not regular, my birth name is you know, Leonard, but I, you know, I go by Lenny. So Lenny Pearl sounds like such a stage name, but no, that's my real name. That's my real name. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So um, tell us a little bit about you. You live in Finland, but you're from the United States, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm from New York. Uh, originally, well, I was born in New York. I lived in Long Island for, in Great Neck, Long Island for about, um, Oh, until I was what, 13, 12 or 13. Then uh, my mom, my stepdad and my sister, we all moved down to Florida. And then I moved to, or uh, we, 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 that was, uh, that was in uh, Boca Raton. Then we, then I moved to Orlando. Then I moved to Massachusetts, <laughs> moved back to Florida. And then I came to Finland. So <laughs> a lot of people ask me here in Finland, like, um, where am I from? And I just, I just say I'm from Florida. It's just quick as that way. Right, right. <laughs> then the whole, the whole East Coast, you know. <laughs> so what brought you to Finland? Um, so it was late 90s. It was like, I don't know, 98, I think it was. And um, I was really into watching Xena and Hercules. The, 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 uh, the what was it, Hercules, the... Um, Legendary Journeys and Scene of the Warrior Princess. Right. And I was always interested in like kind of medieval stuff. And uh, I loved the music and the, and the swords and, the, you know, this kind of thing. So I decided I want some, I want to find some medieval music or Celtic music. So uh, this, I was living in Massachusetts at the time. This was uh, um, near Northampton. And I was working in a frame shop in Amherst. And they had this really, they had this really great little used record shop where you could uh, listen to CDs before, you know, before you buy them. And I found this, and, in the, and I was looking in the, in the world music section, and I happened to come across something. I thought it was really a nice album cover, so I thought, okay, let me have a listen to it. I listened to it for the first like five seconds, and I immediately bought it. <laughs> now, wait a minute, we, somebody in the chat is from Sweden. Is yes. That right? Yes. Uh huh. Okay, so um, I'll tell, so the name of the band that I found was called uh, Hedmigarna. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly because I can't speak Swedish. It's, it's um, Maria, this, Mar Maria Cardell is from Sweden, yeah. Okay, so this band was called Hedmigarna, uh, which translates as the heathens. 
And um, it was this amazing, wonderful uh, folk, um, traditional, you know, uh, hurdy gurdy and violin and, and fiddle and uh, oh, it was, and it with it, it with a bit of an electronic twist. It was great. It turned out there was so that the band had three um, Swedish musicians and two uh, Finnish women singers. And I would um, I was looking in the in the CD booklet and I would I see this like the, in, in, I see the Swedish lyrics and I studied the, I studied German when I was in high school and I was like okay that was German to me okay. And then I saw this long, long word, <laughs> and I discovered, and I didn't know that that was finished at the time. I said, "What is this? What is this? These long, long words? These long words?" Well, anyway, so I um, finally found found out that it was Finnish. So I decided to buy myself a teacher self Finnish book and a dictionary, and I just like sort of fell in love with this like crazy language that has nothing to do with things that we you know the Romance languages or right. Germanic languages, and. Um, so yeah, I bit, so I, I began to study that. Then I took uh, an elementary, what was it called? Elementary finish? I think it was called elementary finish at the University of Massachusetts uh, in the um, Open University. And so two semesters of that. And uh, the teacher, uh, after the second semester, gave us these pamphlets saying that you could uh, study in Helsinki at the Helsinki Summer University. Wow. And, and I did that, and I did that. I did that twice, and yeah. Anyway, basically, then I came came back to came back to Massachusetts, moved back to Florida, started studying my started studying for my degree in linguistics, and then I went. Then I came here to study abroad, and basically stayed. Wow! Wow! <laughs> it, hopefully, that so was so. How many how story. many people in the United States l learn to speak Finnish? Not very many, I would imagine. Oh gosh, let's see. In my class, there was oh god, like five people. Wow. I think I think I think there were five. I, I I do know that I think it's the University of Washington, the University of Washington. Oh, I don't know. So I think yes, yeah, something in Washington State. Um, I think that they have a Finnish uh, department there. I think that's the only place that has Finnish as a. So you read a, and speak Finnish. That's amazing. Yes. How many other languages do you read and speak? Oh, uh, none. I mean, <laughs> my my boyfriend is a, is a, a Finnish. Excuse me, a Swedish speaking Finn. So there's a there's a Swedish excuse, yeah there's a Swedish minority population in Finland, and many towns <clears throat> many towns are either um, unilingual in, in Swedish or Finnish. Or bilingual with one of the uh, with either majority Finnish or majority Swedish. Uh, wow. Most of the towns up north, where my boyfriend is from, um, they're like majority Swedish, Swedish speaking. And uh, the only thing I can really say in Swedish is "jag kan inte tala svenska," which means I don't speak Swedish. <laughs> so the two languages aren't aren't related with each other. They're completely no. different. No, I mean there, there's there, there are. Oh, this is a fun, this is a funny thing. I did take a Finnish, I did take a Swedish course a couple of years ago. It's a couple of, maybe ten years ago. I don't remember when. Um, and the problem was, um, I had I had to take it two times because I failed it the first time. And the reason why I failed it is because there are Swedish structures found in Finnish, and so um, and some of the verbs are some of the verbs are taken from Swedish into Finnish. So I was answering questions thinking like a Finnish person. <laughs> oh, right, right. The structure was... <laughs> I got them all wrong. <laughs> the structure was off. So um, you, so you didn't start knitting till you got to Finland. Right, right, yeah. So how did you get exposed to knitting? <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> before, I, before I answer specifically that, let me say that um, I, I, I mentioned that I was working in a frame shop right uh, in, in, in Massachusetts so uh, the thing is like I've always done art art stuff like art something artistic I've painted I've drawn I mean, pottery uh, um, and music of course but uh, we'll get back I'm sure we'll get into that later yes. of course um, and um, when I was living in Orlando a friend of mine uh, was working at Michael's the arts and crafts store 
and uh, I needed a new job. And uh, she said, oh, the frame shop is hiring. I said, oh, well, I, I think I've cut a mat once or twice. Oh, because I've also done photography. So I, <laughs> And do, do people, do, do dark rooms exist still? I wonder. Only for people who use old cameras. So people still collect old cameras. You know, I think it's probably even hard to get film anymore. You know? Because I, I used to do photography, you know, with the light. And I had you know, right. you know, yeah, the light here. And you kind of like disperse the light like this to make, you know, shadows and, and, and whatnot. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so I was working at uh, the frame shops. So I, I do, I've always done something with my hands and with acoustic guitar, that's another thing. It's very hand oriented. So <clears throat> I've, I had a friend, had, no, she's still around. No, she's still my friend. <laughs> she was living here, but now she's back in Buffalo, New York. My friend, Christina, uh, I always knew she knit, she knitted. And uh, so this was in June of 2000, 11 it was a 10 years ago yeah june 2011 and i went over to her house with her husband her husband was there too and i don't remember exactly why i went because they were, they wanted to watch hockey and i'm not a sports person but the hockey they wanted maybe i was just going over to hang out well i don't remember why exactly but we we hung out and i said the hockey i guess the hockey game didn't didn't start and i said hey christina you know i always see you knitting i i really want to try that I'd like to see, I'm really curious, what, what's it like? I've never done it before. Okay. <laughs> so I'm always up for trying something new. <clears throat> so she got, a, she got a pair of a four and a half millimeter bamboo needles <clears throat> and some blue yarn. Uh, she, cast, she cast it on for me because I guess she thought that was not too advanced, but, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, she cast on the stitches for me, and uh, she said, "Okay, so now you do this. You put the stick. You put the stick. Sorry, that's a, not the stick. You put the needle through here, and then you wrap it around this way, and then you pull it out, and that's called a stitch." I'm like, "Oh, so a loop is a stitch?" She's like, "Yes." And so I'm like, "Okay, let me try this." It was it was so of course it was awkward the very first time. I was like, "Where's my, you know, no tension? I don't know what to do with. You don't know what to do <clears throat> at the you know when you begin." But yeah, I started getting the hang of it, putting, getting the loop and putting, putting the needle through there, getting a loop this. I was like, oh, wow, this is cool. And I, so, I start, so she's taught me how to knit and to curl on the very first lesson, I suppose. And I actually have the swatch. Oh, how cool. <laughs> the first, the, 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 the first swatch, this is the blue yarn. <laughs> There's so many mistakes. <laughs> I don't oh, how cool. This, but, uh, Yes. Yeah, this, this, yeah yes. you can see all the twisted stitches I did over there. That's awesome. <laughs> and then, like, I, I, I guess, like, after I was getting the hang of it, I decided, I'm sure, like, a week or two later, I thought I'd try this, you know, the, the checkerboard kind of, you know. Right. You, know. you were, that was your music coming out in you, see? Remember what we were talking about? You were yeah. making it musical. <laughs> Very cool. And then um, my other friend who was in the choir, uh, I was part of the university choir. Um, I know she knit and um, I got some tips from her and Christina at the time was pregnant. And I told my friend, her name's Erica, if she's watching it or she'll watch it later or something. <laughs> I met him, shout out to Erica. Um, I said, I want to make, um, I want to make uh, Christina a baby blanket. So um, I found a pattern that I thought was kind of cool. Be and you know, uh, you know me, I have to do something challenging and you know, not just great stock in that. I found it had a border and a little, a little triangular hood oh. at, the, at the corner. Cute. So, I was, so I was just diving right in there. And um, yeah, so, so maybe about, I don't know how many weeks, maybe a week, maybe but a couple, maybe a week or two before she was supposed to go, you know, her due date, I took her out to a restaurant. I said, let me pay, I'd like to take her out, you know, for, for uh, lunch. And, oh, by the way, I have a present for you. You remember when you taught me how to knit about two months ago or a month ago or whatever? <laughs> Here. And she's like, what? <laughs> and I never played to help me a little bit with the, with the, with the, this baby blanket. Yes. So. Very cool. Um, so your second thing was a gift. The second no, thing you knit, the second thing you knit was a gift. 
for somebody else. Oh, the first was this. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that was the first. But the second thing was the gift. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So now I know you just finished a sweater recently. We yeah. got to see it and we got to see the process of this as you were working through it. You shared it in my yeah. Facebook group. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> that came out really nice. Really, I, really I, nice. I love the I mean the pattern the pattern is great because I love the I love the pearl side, which is the you know, the quote unquote wrong side, the reverse stock, and that just looks so great. You know, this is yeah, I mean, this is okay, but uh, right. it's just not as, not as interesting as the, the as the pearl side. And it kind of blends the colors a little bit. It makes it it, yeah. it it makes it indistinct where it changes from one color to the next. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, my first raglan. I've never done that before, but I figured, okay, I'm sure I, I'm sure I can handle it. Try to right. handle it. <laughs> right. And they always fit really good. So, have you knit? In, I know you've knit a vest. What else have you yes. knit? The uh, garments have you knit? Um, let's see. I've, I've knit. Um, <clears throat> well, this is my first spare aisle I've done. I did from uh, oh. this. Uh, where's the book? Uh, from this book. Um, this. Uh, and it, it's finished. But this is the um, finished version of the um, uh, knitting with Icelandic wool. Oh, nice. My my friend Bob got this for me for Christmas a couple years ago. But yeah, so this is um, this is my first fair aisle I've ever done. <laughs> That's amazing, amazing. And uh, I think the, 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 here's the floats. <laughs> oh, those look good. That looks really good. So, have you ever? Do you ever? Um, you know, there's all that controversy about yarn dominance. Have you ever heard about the controversy about yarn dominance? Your your sweater on the inside, the way the floats are, to me is correct. So always one color is always over the other, and you don't switch them back and forth. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, well, I could tell on the inside of your sweater you hadn't switched the colors because, like, the light yarn is always above or the darker yarn, or, or vice versa. But that's what makes the lines go straight on the inside of the work. I, mean, I just caught. The, I just. I mean, is, is it is it catching the floats like? Right, the, catching the floats. But some people believe that there is no such thing as yarn dominance. Have you ever heard about that? No, no. Um, we'll talk about it later. But you have good <laughs> yarn. Your yarn dominance is very good. It's very very oh. good in that sweater. It's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, what else would you like to share on your knitting? Well, let's see. Um, <clears throat> This is um, a scarf. Oh, yes. Uh, this is a scarf that I made that I wear all the time. It's uh, cables oh, and uh, bobbles. Bobbles, yeah. Yeah. Very, of course, very... you know, you, you can never, you can never, you know, the, the stock can it, it just right. it could, could, could be that, you know. But there's that. Um, oh, this is a little hat that I made that uh, this, this was, uh, what's his name? Stephen West? Yes. Yeah, this is uh, uh, one of his uh, patterns. Uh, Cute. Uh, yeah, I like this. And it, of course, it's reversible, but uh, that size, I like this side better. <laughs> yep. Um, and then I know you have that blanket there. Oh, yeah. So I can show the viewers. Oh, the, would you call them viewers or, or friends or what? How do we, I'm sorry, how do I address everybody here? They're I'm my sorry. knitting <laughs> friends. My knitting, knitting friends. friends. Yes. <laughs> okay. I wish we could all get together and meet. It would be very fun. I know that would be so. That would be really awesome. <laughs> so I yeah, love this, this is, blanket. Um, yeah, this is a. Uh, there you go. <laughs> a big blanket of. Um, I think the pattern was called sedimentary scraps, where you just like uh, just pull anything you have out of your stash, and this one, and it starts with the diagonal uh, in in garter, and uh, just make it as big as you can make it. <laughs> I and like that. Blend, blend any kind of blend, blend whatever leftovers you have, and just. <laughs> That's a good one because you know I have a lot of yarn in my stash that I absolutely love, but I don't have any particular plans for. But the yarn, yeah. I like the yarn. You know that something like that would be really good because I could use the yarn up so that I don't feel guilty for just keeping it in my stash. You know. Yeah. 
and make something that is like I like that idea. Something when you're sitting and, and watching a movie or something and you can just sit and work on it, you know? A low stress project. Very nice. I, I have heard though that uh, some people who have done this particular pattern um, and then they just they, they use like five strands and just whatever they can just get their hands on that the, that the blanket sort of turns out to be like, I don't know, like a, a paperweight or something. <laughs> heavy, <laughs> that it heavy. Gets really heavy. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just took, I just stuck with two strands and, uh, and, and just went, went from there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So outside of knitting, you have a lot of other hobbies, don't you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, um, passions. I don't know. <laughs> right. They come from within. They, they yeah, I agree. Yeah. To, to me, people will say, what are your hobbies? And I say reading, gardening, knitting, but they're really yeah. not hobbies. They're just something that I need to do, do to fulfill my inner being. Yeah. You know, they come from within, they just come out, you know? So what is what what do you spend the most time working on? Is it your music? Um, let's just see. What uh, do I spend? Well, but aside from watching TV <laughs> and, and, and movies and things like that, um, well, I do a lot of cooking, or I try to do a lot of cooking. Um, and um, I yes, I do music. Um, right now, I'm um, working on an album. Uh, at, at the studio, and it's a, it's a it's been a lengthy process, I would say, with this album because um, of, of, of what should I do? How much money is it going to cost? Uh, also, you know, I, I, I can only be there for like you know one one day one day a week for maybe two or three hours, and it's, it's a process. But so um, that's really interesting because I've never ever thought about that. But you know, knitting's the same way, especially if you're teaching or designing, because it's not just the actual knitting, but even like my doing these live streams and my videos, there's all the ancillary things that are associated with it that you have to learn about or structure yeah. your time about. When I first started doing my videos, I didn't have any special lighting and I, I needed to have diffuse lighting so I didn't get shadows across my hands when I was doing the videos. So I could only do them on certain days when it was like overcast just right, the sun wasn't too right. bright. Do you know what I mean? Because I didn't, I didn't understand lighting at all, to tell you the truth. And so it really restricted when I could make videos. And over the years, because I've been making them for so long, now I have lights that I like and all that kind of stuff. But, but learning how to use the software, learning how to use a camera, learning how to edit videos, the same thing writing patterns. You know, you come up with this idea in your mind and to take that from something in your mind to the knitted article is actually the easiest part. The yeah. hardest part is putting it on paper. Right, and writing yeah. it out and you know and then you have to think about the process am i going to write it down first and then knit it and see if the writing will produce the knitting i want or do you knit it first and then write it up and then knit it again to check your writing and and you know i never thought about music like having to have availability of where you're going to record right you know and have, I mean, it's just i've never thought about that <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I haven't really written a new song in a while, um, and I really haven't practiced in a while, just um, just because, you know, my, my guitar is there, and I, I play acoustic guitar, and um, yeah, so I'm really just focusing now on doing the recording, and of course, when we're recording, uh, you, you know, to a couple, you have to take a couple of takes, and, 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 and uh, you know, I might, I, I'm not, I'm not going to sound like a terrible singer, but like, you know, you can be flat when you're, you know, if you're singing, you, you can be flat. I find you have to redo it. Um, then, then you, I'm discussing with my uh, engineer. He's a great guy. Um, like uh, maybe he'll do some electric guitar, maybe some keyboards, he'll drumming or, you know, we, we, we discuss, you know, how can we make the song the best or, you know, uh, right. Yeah. So right now I'm um, working on my, let's see, I did uh, two cover songs. Uh, actually, um, 
their Finnish songs in English. And I did one of my own, one original, now I'm working on my second original. And I did get the copyright uh, for one of the Finnish songs. Um, and I actually met the guy who wrote the song. And he, he wanted, after I had an email exchange with, uh, with the record company, uh, or not the record, the publishing company, uh, they said, oh, the, he wants to meet you. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> so that was an interesting day when I got to meet him. Um, and the, the, these two songs are like, I would say they're almost like classics. Um, and nobody's ever done them in English. So I figured, okay, why not? I'll do it. <laughs> wow. And so you're, do you sing in Finnish too, or do you just sing in English? I can, uh, I mean, when I'm, when I'm doing karaoke, I'll, I, I'll do some, I'll do, uh, some Finnish songs. Uh, most of my songs are all English. Um, sometimes when I do those two covers, I might add some, I might, uh, do a verse or two in Finnish just to, in fact, I remember this, the, my, one of my last gigs, was it my last one before, before this whole Corona thing? Um, no, no, it wasn't before, it was during, when we, we, had, we had less restrictions and then bars were able to be open. So my last gig was, when was it? I don't remember, well, last summer? I don't remember exactly when it was, but anyway. No, 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 it was this year. It was like, it was like maybe in February. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I, I um, what, what happened? I, I was, I was uh, playing, I was singing, I was doing my, my, the song that everybody knows and I was singing it in English. And then I decided, uh, I, mid, mid lyric, I started singing, um, oh, help me with the lyric now. I can't remember the lyric. <laughs> um, Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. The lyric, uh, I started going, first at all of, oh, forget it. I'm going to sing it and finish. <laughs> and I start singing, you know what I mean? So I just like mid, mid lyric, I said out loud, uh, into the mic, I said, ah, I'm going to do it. Ah, let's do it this way. Forget it. Let's, let's finish it up and finish. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. And everybody laughed and it was fun. Yeah, so. Now, do people there speak English as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. Younger so people, when you were I mean, saying they, that there were unilanguage uni, uni, and bilingual places, but they're really trilingual because they speak Swedish, Finnish, and English. Oh yeah, I was talking officially, actually. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was, yes. Yeah, I meant officially. No, I mean people. People. Yeah, uh, people's English here is very proficient. I mean, they're they're really good. In fact, it's so funny. They they always say to people always say to me, "I'm sorry, my English is so bad." I'm like, "What are you talking about? You hear my Finnish?" Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> So we were talking earlier before we went live about the relationship between a lot of the hobbies that you do and knitting, music, cooking, um, reading, writing, um, and math. And you said, oh, I'm not good at math. You know, that's, <laughs> right. I've never thought of myself as a mathematician. But all of these things are totally math related, you know, and that's how your brain functions, even though you may not call it math, that your brain's not doing math, right. but it really is doing math, just it's doing it instinctively. It, 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 the funny thing is, like, with, with music and math, I suppose, because, you know, you, you always have, you, you do have a, a beat. For some reason, lots of my songs, I, I, I do have a rhythm going on, and then all of a sudden I'll slow down, and then I'll, um, then I'll, then I'll pick it up and I'll, I, I'm very kind of, I like to be very, well, I call it plinkety plunkety with my, <laughs> with my, uh, arpeggios and I'll, I'll, I'll slow, 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 slow down. And then all of a sudden I'll, then I'll pick it up, which is really terrible with the, with the metronome at the studio because, you know, it, right. It gets yeah. them messed up, but it's on math more than that basis because it's all the octaves. That's all math related. All of the. <laughs> Uh, you know, whether you're doing which chord you're doing, it's all math related, you know, oh, yeah. and, and you're just expressing it in a different way. I do. I have many, many, uh, we were talking about this earlier, is that when I teach uh, people to knit and we first start getting into figuring out gauge and I start talking about, you know, measuring and multiplying and dividing and I just see people's eyes just <laughs> glaze over really yeah. seriously, like deers in the headlight, deer in the headlights. And um, but but knitting is math. Knitting is totally, and it's a, the binary thing. 
you know it's knit and pearl and look at how many things you can do with the binary system oh, yeah. you can do that many things with knitting too it's endless it's it's an infinity yeah amount of an infant you know it just goes forever what you can do and that's one of the things i love about knitting is you can never run out of things to learn or try and like we were talking about earlier when i choose a new knitting product project to work on it's usually because there's some element of it that i can experiment with or learn something new even whether it's just putting different colors together or a different combination of stitches or some structure that is new um, and that's what entices me uh, in new projects. So what are you, what are you currently working on, Lenny? Well, um, <clears throat> speaking of the new, the new, um, the new, um, wanting to try something new that you've never done before. Um, so I'm going, my, my boyfriend's mother's 81st birthday is this year. Uh, and, well, I mean, every year is her birthday, but <laughs> her 81st birthday will be in November. Um, last year, um, when she turned 80, uh, Finns here do, a, a, for the, 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 the zero years, you know, 50, 60, they, they like to have a big to-do for these zero years. But last year, with Corona, right. and, um, Kurt, was my, my boyfriend, was, was back in Sweden, and it, nobody could do anything. So I was thinking maybe for, maybe we could take last year's 80 and do it this year. And I wanted to make her this uh, kind of like, I guess, it, would you call it a tunic? I don't know if you would call it's it a tunic. tunic That's a tunic. Yes. Yeah. I think this would look really nice on her. And one of the things I really love about this, I, I've, I've never done a, a, a neckline like this. It's kind of square. Uh huh. That's very nice. So I haven't, um, the, all I've done now for this, <laughs> Swatch one, <laughs> swatch two and three and four, and I have two here that are drawing. <laughs> so right. it's very right. hard. Yeah, getting gauge on this is kind of difficult. Um, What's the yarn you're using? Uh, this is called, uh, it's, I got it over here. <clears throat> this is called uh, Saitsman Bellesta, which is called, which is uh, Seven Brothers. It, it, it's named after a very famous. Uh, well, like the very the very first novel uh, published and finished called um, the Seven Brothers. Uh -huh. I don't see that? Uh huh. Very yeah. cool. So I'm going to be using this. This is basically it, it's it's kind of like the um um it's it's like the um what what do I want to say? I'm, I'm trying to think of it's like it's like the not the national brand of yarn, but like it's like the big the big brand brand of yarn. I don't know is is Lion Lion what, what's right, what's Lion's that? brand or Cascade. You know, in the United Maybe. States, they use Cascade two hundred and twenty as a big you know widely used yarn. Yeah. So this is yeah. So this is the so Novita is the name of the company, and this is the specific this uh, Aaron weight yarn, and uh, I like it also because it's. Um, this and what I did for, for the striped sweater and the, also the sweater vest, it's a, a 75, 25, um, wool and, uh, polyamide, polyamide. Right. Oh, uh -huh. how, how do you pronounce that? I know, I know. Polyamide or something like that. Something I don't know like how that. to pronounce it either. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and it's so nice because it's, it's, um, it's, it's soft and it's not itchy and, um, the, 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 the book, uh, that they use is um, this um, East Tex, um, this Let Lopi. Have you heard of that? Right. The yeah, Let Lopi. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, those are very nice. And I have, I did, um, I finally, oh, speaking of, we, we talked about doing things that we did, that we don't like do things twice. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I made, I made this one sweater um, in blue using the Seitz and Bellia stuff. And then um, I decided, I I said, I want to do the one, I saw someone Ravelry that was in brown, and I actually want to finally use the Plitolop, the Plitoloppi from Ice Dex. So I, uh, it, it, it's it's very nice and soft, but it's, it is it is kind of, you definitely have to have something underneath. Right, it's not underwear, it's outerwear. Right, the Let yeah, Lopi, yes. And so I don't want, I, I don't want her to have to worry about if it's going to be too itchy, you know, on her. So, so I want to make, get something comfortable. So, right exactly yeah exactly but so i'm just i'm just at the swatching stage right now <laughs> so, 
So how long did it take you to make your uh, reverse stockinette stitch sweater, the brown one with the stripes? That a month. Seemed, it didn't take very long, I don't think. Well, it didn't take, no, no, it, it took a month. And a lot of, um, you know, uh, so I live in a town called Turku, uh, which is on the southwest uh, corner or coast of, of Finland. And my boyfriend lives up, in um, what's called um, it's called Pohjanma or Ostrobothnia. It's about well, depending if you take the train or the bus, it'll take f between four and six hours. So I have a lot of time on the bus to sit there and knit. <laughs> oh yes, so, yes, right, yeah. right. So, so a that's lot of, a lot of my knitting time to, was during travel. <laughs> yes. So the people use public transportation there a lot. Oh, I love it here. Which I don't need a car. Although, although Kurt, if, if I actually do, if we actually do move in together, when I, if I go up north, he says you need to get, you need to renew. Uh, well, I don't know if you have renew it. I, I, my driver's license expired. I mean, my, state, <laughs> my, United, my United States driver's license expired like I don't know how many years ago, and uh, I never got one here. So I guess I got to get some new. I don't know how to. I, I think you have to go to a school or you have to just, I don't know how to get a driver's license here. <laughs> so are you a citizen there? I am actually. I got um, citizenship about, let's see, um, I came here in 2003 and after six consecutive years of your, um, your residency permit, as long as you have no breaks in your residency permit for six years um, and you have a command, you can speak Finnish and my uh, I had I have a degree in Finnish, so <laughs> that right, was good enough. Right. <laughs> and uh, of course, processing fee. And um, yeah, after six years, I so that was uh, two thousand three um, nine. I think I think I think they finally granted me citizenship, a uh, dual citizenship, in two thousand ten. Wow! Yeah. Wow, that's cool. That's really you know. Uh, so so I call myself now I'm an Amerifinican. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very cool. So um, we were talking before this, I think when you were talking about, um, no, we talked about it on here. You talked about your, your taking the Finnish classes. I thought that was just really interesting. Now, not many people would be taking Finnish classes in the United States. I mean, and it, and it all started because you wanted to read something in Finnish, right? Mm -hmm. Lyrics. Yes, the lyrics to the music. Yeah. And then that led you led you to going to Finland, and then that led you to learning how to knit. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. It, very it's all. It, it, it's a big chain reaction. Very, very <laughs> and, now interesting. and now I'm on your live stream. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's a huge chain reaction. <laughs> yes. And so this is a, this all comes out of my Facebook group, Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. And I know a lot of you that are watching this are in that group. And I have to say that that group has been a joy, a real joy to have in my life. And I hopefully it's a joy to have in your life too, because times have not been smooth for a while, you know, and it's really nice to have a place to go to where everyone is uplifting to everyone else. And we all, and Lenny's really good at this. This is one of the things that really attracted me to him. He's always uplifting to the other people's projects and stuff and being very, very supportive of everyone's work on there. And that's what it's all about. It's all about having a place that you can come to that is stress free and yeah. actually makes you feel better when you leave so that you come and you visit and it's uplifting to you. No, and, and like I, I wrote in, um, like like what I wrote to you that um, yeah, it's always it's always great to you know you learn something new every day, and, and that's such a that's such a you know the cliche, you know you know, oh you learn something new every day, you know right, <laughs> but, but yeah, but you do, and you yeah. know it's, it's life lessons and knitting lessons, you know, and um, and um, yeah, it's 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 fun. For me, also, if uh, somebody has a, a question that I might be able to help answer, because I'm 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 not the most advanced. I mean, I'm, I'm I don't know what I am. I don't know where 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 I am on the 
advanced or not advanced spectrum, but um, no, I, I've, I've actually always wanted to teach someone to knit. I've always asked people, like, like a friend of mine, will you knit, will you knit a scarf for me? Like, no, but I'll teach you how to knit it. I'll, I'll, I'll right. be with you there the whole time. He's like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm like, oh, come on. I want to, I want to teach you how to knit. <laughs> and you know, and there are people just like you, just like you're one of these people. I, I will have someone in a class who has never knitted before, never held knitting needles in their hands, and they get it. And their brain gets it and they become yeah. a knitter. And I tell those people, I say, you've always been a knitter, you just never got to try it before, <laughs> you yeah. know? And so you finally got to try it and it clicks with you. So Travster has a question for you. Let me put it over here on the screen. Travs, oops, it went really big. I don't like that. Sorry for that. He says, Clinny, Clinny, what are your favorite knitting styles, color work, lace, sweaters, etc.? You've made some wonderful lace pieces. Ah. Oh, yeah. My, 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 this is my little project, my little doily project. I, I, yeah, I, I love lace. I think lace is just so much fun because, like how you said, how you, you, know, you, you have your knit and your curl, and they're always, you know, they're always like this. And you're with lace. You're manipulating the yarn uh, by itself. I like, I, I like cables. Cables are nice. They're fun. But lace, for some reason, because you're just manipulating things by itself, and it just does that make sense? I don't yes. know if that makes any sense. Yes, yes. It's like you're creating a spider web. You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. With a design in it. Right. So, do you have any um, lace there to share? Do you have any of your projects to share? Um, I, my, I actually do this on my, on my little end table here. I can take this one here. Um, so here's a, a, one of my doilies that I... Oh, that's beautiful. I love oh, that. You see that? Yes, yeah. yes. So I, and I, and, um, oh, that big, huge, that big, huge red one. Um, right. Oh, uh, the, um, What's it? Frosted ferns. Apparently, that's the name of the yes. the, the pattern. Yeah, I, I put that. Uh, that's up in the house, up in, in 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 where Kurt is right now. And that other, there was another big uh, um, um, white one that I had made. Um, that's at. Uh, we, I gave that to his sister, and that's now on one of her little tables with a plant on it. <laughs> I think um, that they're doing. They're kind of like uh, a tablecloth, right? The red one was like a tablecloth. It was, yeah, basically yes. became a tablecloth. Those, those are addicting. Those are addicting because they're so beautiful. When you block it, that's yeah. when the magic happens, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that, that one, I, I will admit, though, that, that one, that one, yeah, I was, I was, I was so, I was happy that it went after blocking it, but it wasn't my most favorite one to do, I have to admit. It was just more like, well, this won't ever end. <laughs> well, that's the thing. When you start from the center and you work out and, you know, you've got thousands of stitches, you know, yeah. and, and I always, t I play games with myself. I time myself. How long does it take to do this round? And, you know, a few hours later, how long does it take to do this round? You right. know? And then you can you can kind of project how much longer it's going to take to finish it, and then you start getting the thing about well I'll just do one more round. Well, I wonder how much yarn that's going to take. <laughs> you do I have enough yarn to do one more round? And and uh, if I can if I can give you a a um um uh, what, what do I, a compliment or a a uh, um what do I want to say uh something compliment? Okay, <laughs> I, when I'm doing that, I would think to myself. Oh, read your knitting. That's what Susan would say. Read your knitting. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, get it on the tip. Get it on the tip. You know, I, think, I, I actually say, I have to admit that a lot of times, uh, you are in my head when I'm doing something like, get on the tip and then read your knitting. <laughs> You'd be surprised. People tell me that they go, I spent a lot of time with you last night. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. So did oh, we? He also asked about color work. Did yes, was one of the other questions. Yes, um, I love Noro. Um, I was so obsessed. I did. Uh, I did. Um, do you know Nor Noro Silk Garden or Noro Crayon? I, yes. Oh my God! I, 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 there, there's. I, I love doing the log cabin. I, I didn't do Noro with the log cabin. I did that with the the, the finished version, the the, the Novita 
they 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 had their own kind of version of 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 Noro, same kind of right. uh, variegated. Right. Um, but I find it by some um, Noro, you know, took out a bank loan, and um, <laughs> and um, I did this blanket with with oh, I just, uh, I gave it to Kurt, and let me show you. Um, okay. <laughs> Because I, I couldn't use all the squares. So, let me, let me, um, so here, I couldn't use all the squares, but this was one of the Noro. So I, I, I left this one this one aside. But I, I just love this like painted look that Noro. Yes, yes. It, it's like amazing. And people say, what did you do? I'm like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> it's all, you know what it reminds me of, especially when you do it in garter stitch like that? It reminds yeah. me of the Van Gogh paintings where, you know, he has those, the motion. You know, yeah. it, the, because the garter stitch, when as the colors are changing in the garter stitch, you get that motion to it. It's very, yeah. cool. very cool. I, I, I love, yeah. So, so when it comes to color work, I do love, uh, you know, Noro is, is great. <clears throat> so Trevor also wanted to know, he said, what are your favorite knitting styles? Knitting styles. You mean like... Uh, Probably, or, probably would be more like Fair Isle, lace, um, cables, garments, accessories. I, that's what I think about in knitting styles. Because otherwise you're thinking about continental or throwing, and it sounds like you're a thrower, right? Me? Oh, I'm continental. Oh, you're continental? Oh, awesome. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, oh, no, no. I, I, I tried. I I. I I try to do it. It's, it's, it's the muscle memory is not there and I'm right-handed, but, um, but you know, when you do like I play, I'm, I'm, I am not a musician. Okay. But I do know how to play the violin. I took lessons for years and years and the piano. And I think that probably helped with my knitting because I did that when I was a kid, but you know, the violin, your left hand is actually more important than your right hand. Hmm. You guitar know, too. And guitar, guitar is the same way. So your left hand, yeah. you get more of those fine motor skills with your left hand than you do with your right hand. So for me, holding the yarn in my left hand is a natural thing, and I'm a right-handed person, but I feel more control of holding the yarn in my left hand. Yeah. Um, by the way, one of my songs could use a violinist. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Violin would sound really good on it. I but, am uh, not a musician. I know the fun, I know how I know the mechanics, but making it sound beautiful, that's not me. <laughs> okay. Um so yeah, uh, I, well like I said before, I do love uh lace. Um and um I just you know, I I just like anything that, that I haven't done before. I like I like um I don't have a I like doing lace. I would never I don't wear lace because just Right, weird. You know, I wear and I just a lot of things. I make lace. I either give give them away because I just wanted to make something, and I and people, are like, how much you pay? For, how much you want for that? I'm like, not to just take it. I want. I just you know. Right. <laughs> Friends of mine say, oh, you should sell that. Like, I don't know what I would. No, no, no. Just take it. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I don't have a specific one style that I prefer. I, not that I could think of I, I just sort of oh so have I you have you tried brioche knitting yet I have yes. did you, how do you feel about that oh that's fun I mean I, I remember my, my, my first attempt was a disaster but then I but we did knitting uh, I, <laughs> I I figured it, it lit, when I finally figured out the mechanics of it where, where how that yarn over turns into the you know it right. sort of flips over and then oh Oh, there's the stitch. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but brioche, brioche is really, really nice. I think uh, I, I made a, a two-tone uh, brioche hat for my uh, boyfriend's sister, and uh, no, that was it. I only made one. Yeah. So I I have seen both Nathan Taylor and uh, Alistair Postquin. I've seen both of them do brioche lace. Have you ever seen that? And it's reversible. It's reversible. It's very interesting. So that might be something you could look into next. Uh, yeah, I should try. Brioche lace sounds really interesting. Yeah. Yes, and so it's absolutely, and, and it does look like lace, but it's totally reversible. 
and you can do it with you can trans you can take any lace pattern and turn it into brioche lace by just using the brioche technique with it so um or you know and you know double knitting and, and brioche are very closely related so I don't know if you've done double knitting also, but to me, brioche is someone who is doing double knitting and instead of taking the yarn between the two needles to the other side, they took it over the needle and created that yeah. slip one yarn over. You know, yeah. other than that, double knitting and brioche are, are very, very close. No, it, I haven't done that before. I have, no, I've never done d double knitting. Um, you might like thing, it. I, I, I have to. I have to look into that too. I mean, it, so that one book. Um, where is it here? This one book that I, I bought a couple of years ago. Oh yeah. Knitting. Who's that by? Martin oh, Mark Story. Story. Okay. Uh huh. Um, I, I was getting really confused with the with the with the with the instructions, and and finally I. I sort of finally cracked the code of okay, now I'm getting it. Okay, now I'm understanding. And so, yeah, I'm kind of going through this, thinking, hey, what do I want to knit next from this? And I want to do. And I definitely want to try this um, intarsia that I've I've only knit a small swatch a couple of years ago of intarsia. And um, where is that? I, I I know I posted it on the on the Facebook group, but uh, where, where is it? It's this nice argyle pattern. Yeah, here it is. I thought I was. At one point, uh, I'll, maybe I'll start trying that. Oh, yeah. Uh, you could do that. Yeah. Yes. I'm uh, sure I can. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it's nice, the, 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 is that, the, do you call this the hem? What do you yes, call this? Yes, I would call that the hem. Yeah. Okay. So, so the cuffs, and also the cuffs, or, or just the, you just say cuffs? Cuffs. Yeah, cuffs. So yeah. It would be the hem of the cuff, or the hem of the body. Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, they're on seed stitch, which is really, oh, really nice. Yes. Stuff, I think and yes. it's hard. I don't really see. You can't really see that. Right. But, it um, makes a nice edge for it. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, and it's and it's not just you know normal rib. You know, I mean, I, I oh, I love twisted rib. That's one of my favorites too. Twisted, twisted rib with the you know, knitting through the back loop is yes. really, really nice. Yes, game. yes. In my in one of my boot camp classes, we're currently working on little miniature argyle socks. Ooh. <laughs> so we're Cute. doing we're doing um this is the instep right here. I haven't done the foot. Here's the yeah. the heel. Yeah, I see. So oh, we're yeah. doing these little little miniature this is the argyle section before putting it into the sock. Right. So Oh that's I like the colors. Yes, fun. Okay, well, did we miss anything? Have we covered all the topics we wanted to talk about? Is there anything else you would like to share? Oh yeah, two things. One thing uh, for everybody, I wondered. Oh, yes. Uh, I was I was wondering what 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 should I wear for the for the for the live stream, and I, I had the fancy I don't know. <laughs> and I, I had the, I had the striped sweater on, and it was too too hot inside to wear. You know? I had to take it off. It was getting a little, a little warm, so I decided um, this is a um, <clears throat> this is called Mumi. M U U uh, no uh, uh, no in English it's M O O M I N Moomin, and this is the character uh, the the uh, Moomin troll and Snufkin <laughs> by uh, by an author and illustrator Tuba Janssen. Who uh, these books were? It's, it's I I want to I compare the Moomin characters to sort of like Winnie the Pooh of Finland. Not the not not you know. Not the same, of course, but in, in the sense of like it's their, you know how like Winnie the Pooh with with the illustration with the A. A. Milne, right. A. A. Milne, the uh, Shepherd, I think his name is, uh, with the illustrations are sort of like classic, you know. Right, right. Talking, like, That's the Disney first Pooh. thing I saw of thought of when I saw your shirt. I thought it was Winnie the Pooh, you know, because the the thing the one that's white almost looks like Eeyore. You oh, know, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they call him a troll, Moomin troll. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy is like the sort of the um, the hippie or something. I don't know. He's like the very nature oriented. You know, I like him. I think I love his. I love he looks his like the scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz. Oh. <laughs> Just from from my perspective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So what are so, they cooking? Um, What's in the frying pan? What are they cooking? I I have no idea. I, I, it looks like look those like things little... that you pop over, you know, what are they? 
uh, they look like um i, I want to say they're the little mini pancakes or something yeah it's like yeah Cute. Yeah, I have no idea. I actually don't know what. I don't know. I bought this because I love this character, and, and I oh, I'll tell you in a second. So I, anyway, uh, yeah. So Toby Johnson was uh, did the books in I think the mid forties. Yeah, and like I said, this is sort of like a national, uh, 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 the national na national children's book in the same like I said in the same sense of that, that Winnie the Pooh or. Uh, I can't think of anybody else right now. The best only Green characters. Eggs like, and ham. Because, Green eggs and ham. Who's the author? <laughs> yes. Seuss, Dr. Yeah, Seuss. Yeah, Dr. Seuss, yes. I got this actually um on the um uh I got this I got this in this t shirt in October. My friend and I well I excuse me, I <laughs> I was in the voice of Finland. Wow. And, uh, wow. On the, on, on the tape day for for the blind audition, um, my friend Sara came with me, and uh, she spent the day with me. And it, it, it took place. The, the taping was in a town called Portable, and we were walking through the old town, very quaint little shops and everything. And they had this, one of the shops had all the moving shirts, and I really just wondered if I'd buy this one. And um, yeah, I was in the Voice of Finland. I actually was on TV. I was. Uh, not chosen <laughs> but you got to be on it that's awesome that's yeah. a huge honor huge uh, honor is it is it yeah. on youtube somewhere can we watch it no no unfortunately i think they used to have the the i was saying region you know the not the non-chosen people uh -huh. <laughs> i think they used to have those but i don't think that I, I haven't seen my my audition i actually have oh i could Share it. Uh, it. Would it be? A, we were talking about the Saturday sharing Saturday. Yes, yes, yes. In my group um, on Facebook, we've Margo and I decided that on Saturdays, if you want to share something of your original work, like you wrote a pattern, or you, you know, wrote a song, or you dye yarn, or whatever, you can share that in on Saturdays in the Knitting with Suzanne brand group, because I'm sure there's a lot of people who have are multi-talented people like Lenny, and it would be nice to be able to share that. I think it would be very cool. I, yeah. I, could I, I, could, I, could, I could share that because I, I, I actually, um, um, yeah, they also had me had my interview, and I did it like, I did, I did have, I did it in Finnish and I did it in English, so you'll hear me speak Finnish and then you'll see the little subtitles with me underneath. <laughs> yeah, do that. I would love to see it. I think everyone would yeah. enjoy it. That would be very cool. So what was the other thing? Oh, now you have two things, the voice of Finland oh. and your shirt. All right. I think I wanted to mention the fact that, um, I mean, maybe, maybe I've touched upon it a little bit, how I find knitting is a lot like, I don't know about, I don't know about you with, you know, with, with, with violin when you're, you know, you're playing with the strings because of course the violin is, is an acoustic instrument uh, acoustic guitar playing to me is a lot like knitting in the sense of you're using your hands to manipulate the strings you don't you're, you're not using knobs and buttons and technical things which you do for electric guitar which i which i it, it, i cannot do i'm so not you know right technical in that way i like manipulating with the strings or or, or tuning or, or tuning the the guitar to a different uh, other than standard tuning and having to admit and it gives it a different sound putting the capo you know what i mean so yeah i, I does that make any sense? i hope that makes some kind of sense that i i i i um i relate or i i um what's the word i'm looking for i i What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> you could say it's a tactile relationship or, you know. I think of it in the same way in a way. Yeah, I think right. of it in the same way right. that there's, right. yeah. And you, because you're working with your hands. You know? Yes, yes, so. yes. It's your fine motor uh, manipulation of your hands. Well, Lenny, I want to tell you, I really thank you for being on here today. This has been very, oh, very enjoyable. Uh, it's nice to get to know you a little bit more. And uh, yeah. I hope I was so day. honored when you asked me, I was like, oh, that's wow. That's so I was so honored. <laughs> well, I like learning about other people and knitting and, and all of the other facets that go on in their life that comes together for their knitting. So for you, you know, it's the music and cooking 
and yeah. singing and knitting. So that part of your brain is really active, you know. And even though the math part over on the other side <laughs> is working, it's on the other side, but it's still working in there. Yeah. And, and I like your personality, and I like the warmth that you exude. It's really, really nice for me. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to let you go. Everybody say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Thanks. We'll talk to thank you guys you all much. later. Next week, I'm my special guest is uh, Irina Shar. She goes uh, also by uh, Fiber Chats. She has a YouTube channel. She just started out brand new. And she's going to be my guest next week. So be sure to tune in again next week. So happy knitting. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye.